Ron and his wife, uh, Joanne, and I have traveled a long road together. We first met when I taught them both in a large commercial law class at the University of Toronto Law School in 1984. Over the intervening 25 years, we have shared many exhilarating highs together and also some challenging lows. Like one of his, his distinguished predecessors as Dean of the University of Toronto Law School, Rob Pritchard, who is here today, Ron started as my student and ended as my boss. <laughs> In both cases, a source of enormous pride and joy for me, but occasional irritation <laughs> at their presumptuousness in trying to order my life, uh, inverting the natural hierarchy inherent in our relationship with something that they seem to take inordinate delight in. <laughs> My first substantial interaction with Ron was when he worked with me as a research assistant in the summer of 1985 on a commission of inquiry, part of whose mandate involved looking at adjustment policies in industrialized countries seeking to cope with the impacts, positive and negative, of technological change and globalization. In the study that Ron and I undertook, we sought to explore ways in which caldor hicks efficient changes could at least approximate Pareto-efficient changes by addressing the costs and risks confronted by the losers from these changes. First as a matter of fairness, and second as a matter of political expediency and muting resistance to change. I believe that Ron's early encounter with problems of adjustment and transition costs uh, has stood him in good stead. As Dean of the University of Toronto Law School for 10 years, from 1995 to 2005, he mounted a more sustained and far-reaching set of welfare-enhancing changes in legal education and scholarship in our faculty and beyond than in any 10 years of its history. At the same time, Ron, as a change agent, came to recognize, sometimes painfully, uh, that the Pareto ideal, where there are only winners and no actual or perceived losers, is at best an ideal that can never be fully uh, realized. As Guido Calabresi, uh, the former dean of Yale Law School, pointed out more than 20 years ago. But I believe that Ron got us as close to the mythical Pareto frontier as it is possible to hope for in this world, and, and I've entitled my comments on the Pareto frontier. After Ron was initially appointed to the faculty as an assistant professor in 1988, following graduate studies at law, uh, at Yale uh, Law School, he and I co-taught for many years a course in public policy, out of which emerged various joint publications and a book Later, we uh, jo uh, undertook uh, joint public policy consulting projects in the electricity uh, sector and on the future role of government in Ontario. In more recent years, we co-taught an upper year seminar on law and developing countries, out of which several joint publications and a book on rule of law reform in developing countries emerged. Over this uh, period, we also ran the law and economics uh, program together. Now, there are some in the academic community, and I imagine there are some present, who complain that their, never, their leaders never consult widely enough before launching new initiatives. Under Ron's tenure as dean, I had exactly the opposite reaction. I was consulted into a state of exhaustion. Whether it was the frenzied sound of footsteps up, to the, up the stairs to my attic office, or the frenetic banging on the door as I was trying to prepare for class, phone calls day, night, weekends, emails, cell phone calls, cars, uh, calls from the car phone, later on from his Blackberry, always the now familiar line permanently etched in my memory, Michael, I just want to bounce a few ideas off you. Ron would then lay out the six major initiatives that had occurred to him over the previous weekend. <laughs> and when I reacted cautiously by asking him, him who would be implementing these initiatives, 
it would typically turn out that he had penciled me in for major implementation roles in four out of the six initiatives. When I suggested he might scale back my involvement, perhaps to a modest advisory role in one of these initiatives, he would race off down the corridor or the stairs to find other vulnerable colleagues to spearhead the remaining initiatives. Uh, I recall one weekend in the late fall one year when I was up at our farm. I know I speak funny. Farm is spelled F-A-R-M. <laughs> I was up at our farm uh, uh, north of Toronto with my wife, Jan, watching NFL football, which is one of my favorite pastimes on a Sunday afternoon at this time of year. I don't recall whether the Ravens were playing the Eagles, but it's uh, not relevant uh, to the purpose of my story. I, I, was, I was watching the football game, uh, drinking Guinness, sitting in front of a roaring wood fire, smoking my pipe, and Ron must have called three or four times to bounce new ideas off me. Anytime I suggested a mild diversionary reservation, he would call me back within half an hour with a refined proposal. Out of exasperation at these constant interruptions of my football viewing time, and inspired by something I'd been reading in one of Hunter S. Thompson's uh, books, Fear and Loathing Somewhere in America, <laughs> I said to Jan, if Ron calls again, Tell him I've just gone down the back 40 with two of my farmer friends to break in a recent colt, and then tell him we plan to move up to the barn to castrate some young bull calves, <laughs> and then throw in for good measure that we've been drinking wild turkey all weekend and we're crazed out of our minds, <laughs> and he should defer all a few further calls until the following day. This is what is required, I am advising you, If, <laughs> this is what will be required, I'm advising you, if you want to slow Ron down. <laughs> uh, my parting uh, words of advice to the John Hopkins community, drawing on my 25 years of shared experience uh, with Ron, are these. Uh, get ready for a 24-7 presidency and permanent gale force winds. <laughs> and begin uh, preparing credible pretexts now, more credible than, my, than mine, <laughs> for brief respites from the eye of the hurricane. Uh, I noticed on the schedule for yesterday morning a presidential fun run scheduled for what looked like close to dawn Uh, which, as an outsider, I felt able politely but firmly to decline to participate in, despite what I viewed as undue pressure from the president's office. <laughs> uh, but this, I am afraid, is the harbinger of things to come. Thank you very much.